destination nightmare, the B Movie Podcast. <laughs> Cool. I guess we're going to talk about Mark of the Mark Vampire of the Vampire. from 1935, I think. Uh, I can see why people kind of like, I like the movie for the most part, but I can see why people are kind of like, you know, middle of the road on it because it is, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of like it sets you up for something. Right. And it kind of like, it, and it's too much of a setup in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the graveyard at the beginning, the old lady, the bat flying, the villagers, oh, the vampires, oh, this and that. And I'm like, and then when you get to what really is going on, you're like, so it's just, well, anyway, I'm not going to give a, I'm not going to give a, away the ending until later yeah. on. But, you know, that's how I felt about it. But I did like the scenes and I did read that. There was 20 minutes cut out of this movie. Really? Yeah, and apparently, apparently, some of it they alluded to some of it had to be like there was some kind of uh, allusions to an incestuous relationship between Ka- Baron, between Bella Gosi and uh, and sure. uh, and Luna. Ooh. I don't know. I didn't you know. Are they related or? That was his. That was his daughter. Oh. Okay. Oh well. Uh, that's Ooh, supposed that's... to be his daughter, anyway. You know what that's I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why they allude to incestuous relationship. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to be his daughter. You know, they're the town vampires, and you know they get blamed for everything. I guess you know, so <laughs> pestilence, neck bites, you know, mosquitoes, rats, you know, whatever, you know. But you can... yeah, this movie this movie is loaded with atmosphere. I mean, it's atmosphere galore. And you could see they still had the, a bit of that silent, yes, be overacting involved when they would would do some things or, or move certain ways, you know. Because in the silent movie, you had to, to show emotion with your body and your face, and you know that's why. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Lon Chaney would you know, he was he always had like big action, sure, you know, because they did you couldn't hear his voice to uh, to emote. Uh, anything I, but, I like that i like to act like we're in public you know when i go to a store it's like you know <laughs> how much is this <laughs> 25 dollars <gasps> that'd be funny if one day you decide to go out and just act like a silent movie actor all day with all these over you know, over the top uh, uh yeah because they do overact man but they had to because it was just a style and they didn't yeah. have any uh-huh. music or well uh, did they not have any? No, they didn't have any music. Music was added later, but they yeah, didn't have any uh, any yeah, lines. Playing the piano, you know, dun, 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 you know, uh, probably the local piano teachers or somebody. The local uh, pianist. Yes. They, so they would actually have the piano at the theater, and they, I guess they, they uh, had some kind of music on when to play what, and they, I think they had to have, have watched the movie while they. There's a theater in Tampa where I think the lady, I don't know if the lady's still alive or not, but they had a lady who played the organ, the old, the old yeah. pipe organ along with the silent movie or whatever, which is pretty cool actually, you know, yeah. like Phantom of the Opera or something with the, with the live music or whatever. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, yeah this is a remake as we talked about before of London After Midnight and, uh, the lost movie. And, you know, it makes you wonder if it's obviously it's lost, but, you know, a, a guy I watched talking about Mark of the Vampire said, you know, maybe it's not going to be that great if they ever find it. I'm like, well, I'd still like them to find it. Yeah, you know, I want to at least see it to see what I want to see a move, you yeah. know, like, you know, I've also read that some reels were available, but not all of it. I'm like, well, if there's some reels that aren't on that are still why don't you just put them on and then just add the photo photo thing in between? I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a definitely like it's got a mystery around it, you know, uh, a mystique or something like that around it. But at any rate, yeah, this is the remake uh, with uh, Ella Lugosi. And and you know, I'm not sure about it, but that they don't ever explain. I mean, yeah, we we talked about it before. They don't ever really explain the bullet hole in his head now. 
I, or do they? It's something about he committed suicide or something. No, I, that's what I, I, if I'm not mistaken, in some vampire law, because Hollywood tends to mix all this crap in, in, in some vampire law, if you commit suicide, you can't go to heaven. So you're, you're meant to walk the earth and you become a, a vampire. And there are some places that have different types of vampires. One, from sickness and will suck your life force while the other one drinks your blood. And some, they they can change into bats or wolves or other animals, and others, they stay in human form. So it, it, it gets all kind of hazy. And But does this, this movie does not explain the bullet hole in his head. And it may have been a scene that was in there. but That, that was cut. cut yeah. Yeah, it might have been a scene yeah. that was cut out of it for whatever yeah. reason. And I mean, you would think that they somebody would have the this. That's the other mystery. Where are the uh, twenty minutes of yeah. cut yeah. out of this movie or whatever? They destroyed in a fire too, or they just got lost along the way or something. Like yeah, because this movie's only six. It's an hour, right? I mean, yeah, it's an yeah hour. twenty minutes cut out of this movie. Why? Wow, that sucks. They may, uh, they may have made it a better movie, or made it made it may have made it a worse movie. Who knows? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, it's like if the movie takes a while to get to the to get to the point. It, it, it builds a lot of, I guess, for lack of a better, I'm not giving for a lot of BS yeah. to get to because really, for what happens at the end, they didn't have to go through all the yeah. and there's all the rigmarole, especially since. In some of the scenes, like there's one scene where the maid and the butler see this bat, and then it sort of fades away, and then uh, Bella Lugosi appears. So you're like, "Whoa, that must be a real vampire," because you know you see him. Trans- yeah, right. You're right. Remember that scene where you, you see him? You see a bat in the window, and it all of a sudden yeah. it becomes Bella. You're like, "Oh, okay." And then in the other scene where the the girl Luna, she flies in on these wings. That took three weeks to do that scene. I read something. It took three weeks to do the effects for that. And uh, that that made him look like a real vampire. Uh, in fact, it, I was watching, uh, what do you call it, a uh, uh, trailer uh-huh. app that they put out at the time the movie was coming out. And there was another scene of her flying, but this time she's going away from the camera. I don't know if it's with they had a longer scene where she was like circling around, and it's and, not in the movie. No, it's not in the movie. So like, why they cut? I mean, I don't. I, I took Todd Browning by all intents and purposes probably wasn't a real great director, you know, but he did have success in silent movies, and he did make Freaks, even though Freaks was an infamous movie, and I guess this is his way of coming back. But I don't think he made many movies in the '40s, if any. You know, I think he just did a. A yeah. few more things, and that was it, you know? I didn't know him from Freaks. That's it. And uh, I know he, uh, uh, yeah, I think he did more silent movies. Sure, he did more silent movies, yeah. Yeah, with Lon Chaney, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then when I was surprised to discover he did this movie, because we, last time we discussed this. Uh, yeah, because it's, cause it's, the, it's the remake of his, uh, which is funny, because it's a remake made like eight years later. Yeah. Something you know like what that. I mean? But I guess they do that today, too. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it's nothing, you know. For different reasons, because they don't have any ideas. Yeah, I'm looking up Todd Browning right now. Let's see what movies he made. Let's see here. Uh, films directed by Freaks, Dracula, The Unknown, Long After Midnight, Mark of the Vampire, and The Devil Doll. Is that it? That's it? Wow. Well, and, and he lived till 1962. Wow. Let's see. Let me look on IMDb. Let's see what movies. Dracula. Okay, no, he did Miracles for Sale, The Devil Doll, Mark of the Vampire, Fast Workers, Freaks, The Iron Man, Dracula, Outside the Law. No, he did more, but Silent, yeah. The 13th Chair, Where East is East, that's Lon Chaney. West of Zanzibar, that's Lon Chaney. The Big City, Sun <coughs> After Midnight, The Unknown, and, and the, sh- the Show. And was there more? Yeah, The Road to Man. He did a lot more. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Unholy Three. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did a ton of movies. He was doing movies in nineteen nineteen seventeen. Wow. I don't know if they were movies or short subjects, but he did a lot. But I don't, I don't know how much better he got. The last thing he did was Miracles for Sale from nineteen thirty nine. Wow. 
Well, and no, he did one called The Devil Doll, which I think I've seen where they shrink people down or something like that. And then has uh, that's got Lionel Barrymore, who's in this movie again as the uh, the vampire hunter or whatever. Right. Or whatever the heck is. So Todd Browning did do a lot of silent movies, yeah. No doubt <laughs> about it. And I don't think he got it much better, but I guess he was competent enough to, uh, yeah. you know. If I remember correctly, in the early days of the movies, most movies were on a single... Uh, film film reel, and then they when they got ambitious, they uh, would have the movie split between two reels, and they would call them two reelers. Two reelers, yeah. I think, yeah. I think uh, a, a film reel is roughly thirty minutes, give or take. So that would be an hour, and then uh, that that probably made the reels bigger because the projectors got more powerful or something. I don't know. Yeah, if somebody somebody's got okay. Let's say, is it is it here five five shots that weren't in the movie? Well, these are just shots or whatever. But um, I'm wondering if there's like a film book on this or whatever. You know, what I mean, because sometimes I have some some old Universal film books and they do show you. I mean, I do have the Mark the the London After Midnight uh, uh, movie movie you know book or whatever. But that's like 250 pages or whatever. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if you go look up uh, the uh, Mark, uh, Mark of the Vampire trailer, there uh, are some scenes in it. Yeah, there's some scenes that looks like. Uh, well, it's, it, I think the, uh, Bella Lugosi's talking uh, to the audience, and then you see some scenes from the movie, and like that's when I caught it. It's like I saw um, uh, Luna flying in. And it's like, well, that's a, that was a cool looking scene. That's as cool as the other scene they show. Why didn't they show both? That, it it's, been... it's, if you look on YouTube, it says here lost scenes oh, of cool. Mark of the Vampire. But I don't know if it is or not. I'm, I'm look. I'm checking it out right now on the phone because it says, you know, Mark of the daughter, daughter of the vampire. They call it. No, this is this scene was in the movie. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I, don't, I think they cut him out and they're like somewhere. Who knows what they are. MGM's vaults got burnt, you know, so I'm sure everything, a lot of that stuff got burnt, you know, back in the, what, 60s or something like that. I don't know. So, so anyway, what's this movie about, man? I know in the beginning of it, it's like the dot, it's like you're setting it up with all this like graveyards and this. And then there's like the, the, the count was, the, the, the count was killed a year ago and his daughter's coming back to get married, something like that. Basically, it's a murder mystery. Yeah, spooky supernatural. They murdered. They murdered the the count right before yeah. the marriage, right? The count is murdered. Uh, his daughter or the butler finds him. Somebody finds him. But before uh, you know about this, it's like five minutes of like atmosphere and vampire yeah. lore. Yeah, yeah. The, do- the in the beginning, you see the doctor racing along the road on his horse drawn carriage. And then you you see uh, all these uh, gypsy town folk singing and praying, and then some old lady, she's in a graveyard picking, I guess, bat thorn or something, and uh, her 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 uh, shawl gets stuck on a, a, a like a small hand rake, and she thinks it's the somebody from the grave grabbing her, and then a bat flies in, and she starts freaking out, and then the uh, the doctor comes in really quick, and he's all. You know, nervous and, and and because it's sundown, and then they're telling two uh, uh, British people that you know you can't go, you shouldn't go out tonight because it's after midnight and the vampires are out, and and the, the two British people are like you know making fun of them and stuff. And um, yeah, it's just all atmosphere and, and sort of foggy landscapes and all this vampire law coming out. And then um, it's it goes to a scene in the bottom of of uh, this house, this castle, and uh, well, the uh, the I don't know, was he a lord or or uh, some aristocracy? And all the uh, help are talking back and forth, and then the guy who lives next door, who lives in the castle next door, Otto. I think that was his name. He comes down and says, "Oh, something's happened, and uh, the police, uh, your your master was murdered, and the police chief is coming to um, 
to interview you. As long as you tell the truth, nothing will go wrong and stuff. And then um, the doctor and – no, then um, you, you see the uh, – did they go up and insp- and the doctor, who you saw in the first part of the movie, he's saying um, – Oh, uh, uh, you know, he, he, this man was killed by a vampire and the, the, uh, um, inspector, mm-hmm. who, he's, he's saying, oh, no, Lionel, that, Lionel and Atwill, right? Yeah, I think Lionel like, Atwill. No, oh, this is ridiculous. This is crazy. You know, not, that, that, that couldn't happen and stuff. And then, um, uh, the, the, the you see the girl, she's all distraught because her dad was killed. And then the, the, her fiancé comes in and is, I'm going to take her away. No, no, you got to leave her here. And we still got to do the investigation. And, the, and then Otto says, well, I'm her guardian, so she can come over to my house. You know, and I'll say. That's I'll, the Baron. Yeah, Baron Otto's. Yeah. Whatever. And, you know, it's, oh, and the chief inspector is suspicious. And, uh, you know, you're her guardian, says yes. And, uh, um you know, I'll take care of her. And she's supposed to get married to her fiance in like a week's time or something. Yeah. So then, um, the, uh, doctor and the, the butler are in the, uh, with the, uh, Count's, uh, library where he was found dead. And they're looking and they're trying to, the doctor's upset because the inspector said, you know, uh, it couldn't have been a vampire. And, you know, the butler's all like nervous and stuff. And then suddenly the butler looks up and he sees this uh, suit of armor and the, uh, Oh, the cat coming out of the bike yeah. was moving up and down. And he points to the doctor and they're both holding each other uh, afraid. And then suddenly the visor pops up and a cat crawls out. So it's a bit of humor there. You know, that's like in that. I, I don't know if that's an early version of the cat scare or whatever, but you know. So that yeah, that's right. Usually in these movies, it's, you hear something, something's going on, and suddenly it's like a cat goes. Meow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Early cat scare, or whatever. <laughs> so there's an inquest, and the townspeople are saying that you know they they saw the the count who was in this deserted castle or abandoned or whatever. Uh, I saw him there. He's a vampire. Oh, you—you you actually saw the the uh, the, the bandit, you know, the, the old count, and it's like, well, it, he was in bat form, and so it appears there's a lot of superstition going on in the uh, the town. They don't really tell you where. I, I don't think they tell you where. Oh, where was the set in? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. Some east, it's obviously some Eastern or Middle Middle European. It looks like it, but everybody spoke English. So. But they, yeah. they, they did have last names. They, their last names were a little, you know, yeah. off or whatever. Yeah. The last name. So at the at the inquest, they say, well, you know, the count died under mysterious circumstances or whatever. So then, um, is the gypsy? Then you see a, th- a, c- a scene of the townspeople dancing and singing and stuff, and the fiance and the the girl are looking. And he goes, "I brought you here to cheer you up." And she gets all sad, and she's like, "Well, they're dancing in honor of my father, and uh, I, you know, it's, it, it makes me sad." So then, um, I know, right? <laughs> is that is that the cat Mimi? That's cat Mimi. <laughs> Her version of trying to do a cat scare. Yeah, she sure did. <laughs> so um, the bo- the boyfriend wants to take her away, and she says, "No, I need to stay here." And uh, you know, I'm getting married and stuff. So the guy's trying to. Uh, um, the, the the Baron, he's getting the, the the what do you call it? The the his place set up or, or the castle, but the that, I don't know if they're at his place sometime. I think they're at his place sometime. It's hard to tell because it's the like office. you know they don't really go into that explanation. But no. Anyway, the boyfriend's walking along and he passes by the old haunted castle and he gets attacked. And they didn't really they never explain who attacked him, but I. I 
based on what happens in the movie, I realized it was the Baron who attacked him and tried to make it look like a vampire. But he right. didn't get a chance to do him in. Because you find out later on, it's, that's pretty obvious in the movie, that Baron Otto wants to marry the daughter. even though they're Yeah, yeah, married. yeah. Because that was like, well, that's explained later or whatever. Yeah. And so... So then there's like a scenes of her in the in the castle and Luna shows up and yeah. you know and and pretends to put the bite on her or because she doesn't leave any marks you know yeah I don't know if she did or not but no uh, she didn't leave any vampire marks uh, you know? and there's a, a a scene where the some coach driver and and the new maid is driving along and he's rushing to get home because it's night and she's laughing at him because it's dark and then you see luna standing by the entrance yeah right yeah so then she freaked they both freak out and, and run away and then she comes in to to the house and starts talking about the vessie and the vampire girl and stuff and and uh, by that time they had called uh, the, the uh uh Was it Lionel Barrymore? Yeah, Lionel, yeah, Lionel Barrymore. Barrymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He calls yeah, yeah. him in, and he's uh, talking about, oh, it's a vampire that's doing this. And, yeah, uh, he's the, a vampire hunter. Yeah, and the inspector's sort of like poppycock and stuff. He says, listen, you got to listen to me. This girl's life's in danger, and we have to protect her and stuff. And then... Um, Then they have to go to. Then they have to make sure that the father is in a vampire, so that they go to a crypt yeah. or something like that. They're big talking and um, uh, the inspector and the Baron go. Oh yeah, because he's telling them about how vampires come out at night, and in the daytime they have to sleep in uh, either the place, the uh, ground they were buried in, or something similar and suitable. So. Um, The uh, and, and, and the nighttime they're up and around activity. So they, um, the Baron and the Inspector go to where uh, the Count was buried, and they find the coffin open and empty. And, and the Baron's getting all nervous and freaked out and stuff. So then, um, you know, they go back. Let's see my notes. And. Uh, Well, no, they they go back to the house, and they get, I think the girl gets attacked again, and and then the the, the scene where the uh, the the butler and the maid talk about how they were like going to get something and and putting bat that bat thorn, thorn and scene. then all of a sudden that's the scene where where Bella yeah, comes out of the window or whatever. Bat flying, and then Lugosi comes out of the window, and then you know Lionel Atwell. Well, we got to seal the house off, put bat thorn on every window and door and stuff. And then, uh, you know, they're telling the girl to lay to bed, lay down to bed, and the you know, he he brings the Baron and the Inspector in, and he's he's um, trying to tell them to, uh, uh, you know, we have to protect her because they, they're going to call to her and pull her away and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, that's, they see Lugosi and stuff. They check on the girl, and she's sort of like still in a swoon or whatever. So they think she was attacked. And then they go down to the boyfriend who's, who's laying down, who's sleeping down in the uh, downstairs somewhere. And they go to wake him up and he's like, oh, uh, it was a deep sleep. Oh, you know, and the, the, the Atwell goes, not Atwell, the other one, Barrymore goes to him. Oh, it's almost like you were drugged or in a trance or something. So it's the implication is that, um, Uh, one of the vampires, you know, made him go to sleep or something. So they could bite her, yeah. Because yeah. he, 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 they found two uh, wound marks on his neck. And then um, the, uh, there, was, there was another scene where the inspector and the baron, they go to the haunted castle to look at, oh, oh, after the girls attacked, and then, uh, They're looking around the house to find Bella Lugosi. You, you hear uh, gunshots, and then you see uh, the Lionel Barrymore has, was firing at Lugosi and the court, the the dead father, who a count, who was turned into a vampire. He sees them walking away. So then the and there's another guy too. Besides the there's Bella Lugosi, there's Luna, there's uh, the dead father, and there's another guy involved in the yeah. vampire family too. 
Yeah, he, he's another vampire, but they don't really. Yeah, they don't really explain him too much. Yeah. So the inspector and Otto and the, the Baron go to the castle, the haunted castle, to look in, and that's you see the uh, the dead count playing the organ, and then you see Luna sort of fly in on on uh, bat wings. A very cool effect. It's yeah. Kind of, they're really it, they're, they're kind of flapping, and as she lands, they sort of fold. Uh, Otto starts to get freaked out and stuff, and then um, they uh, they go back to the house and they they uh, say, "Well, we have to find the vampires because they sleep during the day and blah 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 during the day and stuff." When they uh, they come back, every, everybody's all excited and, and nervous and stuff. And the, uh, Lionel Barrymore's attending to the girl because she's sort of know still weak and, and so so you need rest you sleep and then the maid um yes has the maid watcher and then uh uh but before before, before that the boyfriend comes up or fiance and says you know i'm gonna get you out of here and she says no no yet i have to stay here and he's like but this is crazy you're you're, you're not good feeling because you started getting out of character like she was yeah then she started going oh wow, wow. Says, i don't understand you first you're you're upset and weird. Now you're happy. And so she goes, uh, oh, let's go out and do something. And then that will comes in and brings the uh, fiance aside. Says, don't interfere. A life's in danger. It's very deadly. You know, just go back. So then the maid is watching her that night. And she's just lying to sleep. And the maid is, is falling asleep. So she goes to get coffee. She comes back and the girl's not there. And you see her walking away with... Luna, and um, so they go after her. Oh, in the meantime, the three guys, the doctor, no, not the doctor, Lionel Barrymore, uh, Lionel Atwell, and uh, Baronado, they they go to look for the the haunted castle to look for the um, the vampires. And then so they they find the dead um, count, the girl's father, and says and the and the uh, Baron Otto starts freaking out. And he's, he want, he wants to like cut his head off because that's one of the ways you kill a vampire. Yeah, right. When they're inside the crime. No, yeah. so you can't kill that guy. We have to find all of them and kill all of them. Otherwise, they'll come after us for revenge. So they start searching around. They find Bella Lugosi laying there. And then suddenly the candle goes out in this pandemonium. They get separated. And uh, so they're, they're looking around. And then uh, the doctor finds the Baron, and they're going to go upstairs. And the Baron starts uh, talking to him, and, and he's got a candle, and he's hypnotizing him. Then you go upstairs, and you see the count playing music and the girl comes to him and then she breaks down she says oh i can't do this it's you look so much like your father then the inspector comes and he say you have to do this you know we, we we're really close to catching him and stuff and you find out that this the guys are not a vamp the dead father anyway is not a vampire and uh lionel atwell i mean uh, lionel barrymore brings up uh, Baron Otto he says he's ready and I gave him a hypnotic suggestion he's going to recreate the crime yeah, yeah. so he recreates the crime he, he slips poison in t- it's it's like it's a, uh like it happened a year ago or whatever yeah it was so, a year bit it was a year before yeah. yeah the year before so you have the you see the count who's uh, who's actually not the count he's an actor but he looks a lot like the count He's uh, writing something, and he, he gives the uh, uh, the Baron one of his pockets, and then the, uh, the Baron, uh, there's a present that the father is going to give to the daughter on her marriage, and the Baron, or, I don't know, something. Do you and the t- Baron starts, well, you know, maybe, I thought I thought she, she shouldn't be marrying that guy. She should be marrying somebody who's more of her caliber, like him, or whatever, you know. Yeah, that's right. And so, anyway, the the guy goes to the safe to get a, a bracelet to have it clean. And while he's there, the Baron poisons a poison in the wine. 
And then, uh, he, he walks out with the, with the case and the butler lets him out. And then he sneaks around to the other side and the guy, at that time, the uh, fake count and the police officer and the doc and the, the vampire expert, they're talking and they say, oh, he, he poisoned your drink and he's going to sneak around. So you just pr- drink the drink. I guess it wasn't really poisoned. And then you um, go back and pretend you're dead. So, you know, the, the Baron's sitting there watching the, the fake count drink and then like, fall down dead. And then you see the, uh, the Baron sneaks in. He takes a, he lights a, a candle or something and he starts heating the edge. And then he's going to, it takes out a small pair of scissors and he's going to cut the dead count, the fake count's neck. And then suddenly Lionel Lat will burst in, rests him, puts him in handcuffs. And, uh, uh, uh and then it cuts to the last scene, yeah. right? Yeah. The, well, the other, then the, uh, uh, Barrymore wakes him up from his hypnotic trance, and he he realizes that he he did yeah he didn't want the not only didn't want the girl to get married, but she had a dowry or a trust. Dowry, or, yeah, there was yeah there was money involved in land or whatever, yeah. That if she even if she didn't marry him, he still had control of the money and stuff. And then uh, the, the inspector Lionel Atwell says, "Why did he heat the cup up and stuff?" He says, "Well." The heat would have, uh, if put it against the neck, when it was cut, it would have pulled the blood out and made it look like he was drained of blood. But right. they kind of blame that. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> kind of interesting. And then uh, it switches to the haunted castle, and you see the Lugosi and Luna and... And the other guy. The other guy. They... Um, they're packing up, and you see it's like a trunk that says some vaudeville team or whatever. And he goes, uh, you know, Lugosi, he's still dressed like the vampire. He goes, you know, this has given me an idea for a new act. And this time I will play the vampire. And the the, the woman, the Luna, the, yeah, sure, but just, like, help us pack up so we can go to the next town for the sh- for a show or whatever. Yeah, and then at the so, end. Yeah, so it was kind of a... It really was kind of creepy and weird in a lot of ways, but like when they when they set up when you got to the end, there was no supernatural thing, no vampires. It was clever, but you still you wanted something. Well, they went out of their way to make it seem like they were vampires. It was it was almost over, too much over the top. Yeah. To make them seem like they were vampires, you know, and it was like, okay, all right, you're, you're really hitting me over the head with this vampirism. And then, you know, and then there's the bullet hole in his head and all this other stuff that's kind of confusing, you know. So within the context of some great scenes, because I think that's what Todd Browning was good at, coming yeah. up with great scenes, yeah. but maybe the storyline's not so fantastic, you know what I mean? And, uh, and yeah, you're left with some cool scenes, some great imagery, but kind of like, uh, eh, okay story, I guess, you know. You know it was made. It, the story was written in 1920 something, so maybe it was a, maybe it, it had everybody fooled by at, at that time. You know, I don't know. It, it would have been interesting if instead of uh, you, you could have worked out the scenes where he had like two types of two vampires, and one doesn't know about the other, and at the end you see like one of the set of vampires was uh, uh, the actors, and then there was another real vampire there that. You know, they, so it kind of like kept the supernatural element alive in that because they did such a great job of building up that spookiness and yeah, you know, throughout the whole movie, the, the girl Luna, the female vampire, she said nothing. No, nothing. Which made it nice and creepy. And Bella but, didn't say anything until the end. Yeah, he didn't say much either, actually. Apparently he had lines cut in the movie, so he really didn't say much of anything. You know, he just looked, he just had his few scenes where he looked like Dracula, you know, and everything was, you know. I so it's that. like, it, it almost felt like the, like, I don't know, am I wrong in thinking that the whole town, was the whole town in on it or was it just the beginning think, of it? it was just I a setup. If, after watching it a second time, I think the whole town, was just very superstitious. Superstitious, yeah. And they 
because of there were. And the Baron took advantage of it. Yeah, he took advantage of it, and then uh, Atwill and um, Barrymore also took advantage of the fact because <coughs> the Baron didn't believe it. I don't think he did until they started. Uh, Atwell and Barrymore started to, uh, you know, do their tricks and make and he st- and then the Baron started to really believe it that they were true and and such. Yeah, the, the, the uh, traditions were true. Yeah, it's a fun movie. I mean, it's short. You know, <coughs> I unfortunately had to watch like a colorized version of it, which is pretty terrible from uh, TNT back in the uh, '80s because I didn't have the original. Well, I do have it, but in VHS and it's in storage somewhere, so so I didn't get the full impact, but I got the basic, you know, yeah. gist of the movie or whatever, you know, so. Yeah, but it is it is another movie where Dracula where Bella plays Dracula but doesn't play Dracula, so Yeah. Yeah, they they tried a whole bunch of ways to get around like the, some of the imitators or the the knockoffs with trying you know, calling him Dracula without calling him Dracula. I guess it was on the copyright or something or who the hell knows. Well there's there was Return of the Vampire, which was made by another studio. This is MGM, so Dracula's yeah. Universal I think Return of the Vampire was Columbia. And then the, I guess the last time Bella played Dracula on film was Abbott and Costello and me Frankenstein. I think that was the last time. Probably. But he played Igor in some movies and he was pretty good as Igor. And, you know. Apparently he was a very good actor. It just when he came here. He was Is that, he, but he had that accent that. Yeah, he had, he had, had uh, gotten away. And I saw pictures of him when he was real young. Because I think he was. How old was I think was he in his forties or, or? I think so. Yeah. They played Dracula, but when he was young, like in his twenties, he was very handsome and debonair and stuff. And uh, he played Jesus in, in, a, pl- in a play, I guess. I yeah, think there's it, a picture of him as Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he was he was an accomplished actor who came here. I got typecast, and uh, in part because of his accent and. Um, yeah, you know, he wasn't as nearly as famous. He's often compared to Karloff. But Karloff had more. Yeah. It, it, well, he had, you know, he it, he had an English accent, which was okay with the movie studios, and uh, I guess he he uh, he was picked for a lot of a broader range of characters. Yeah, he could play like, I mean, he was always playing Boris, but he could play. Maybe more versatile actor, maybe you know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's funny how some actors, you know, they get typecast and they don't care. They love it. They'll they'll go with it. Vincent Price. Yeah, you know. Vincent Price. You know, he he uh, loved <laughs> you know being horror stuff and talking about. It. He could do. He could act in a variety. He was also a versatile actor, but he became well known for his uh, you know being a creepy. Monster guy, and he went with it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. He he reveled in it, you know. And then uh, other actors, like I, I uh, listening to Howard Stern in the early times, they would always send Stutter and John out to try and interview Fred Gwynn. Oh yeah. Oh, that was bad. Oh, I know what yeah. you mean. I know what you're talking about. Frankenstein uh, themed. Herman course. Monster. And he, yeah, her, and he never wanted to talk about being Herman Munster. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. Why? Because he's so well known for that and for uh, Car 54, Where Are You? But he never really seemed to want to talk about it. Like just, I, I, that I don't understand. Uh, I, I, he, saw, he thought of himself as a more versatile actor than just Herman Munster, which was silly. Yeah, I know. I watched that interview where it was like, Okay, John, you're not supposed. Don't ask him about Herman Munster. So, what does John do? Uh, 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 what about uh, uh, Herman Munster? And he's like, you can see, like Fred Gwynn looks at him and goes, John, like real <laughs> exasperated, like John. <laughs> what did you want to know, John? You know, I was like, yeah, I know, I remember that. That was <laughs> that was when Howard Stern was good. Yeah, and funny. <laughs> it's a long time ago, man. Oh God. You know, a lot of those guys don't work for them anymore, and they're kind of bitter. But you know, hey, whatever. You know. Yeah, I, I well, listening to the show, he didn't always sound like the greatest boss. No. Yeah. No. No. But you know, they they yeah you know, they they played their their parts as clowns well. So. 
Yes. But anyway, yeah, so Mark of the Vampire, uh, it's worth checking out. It's all yeah. right. It's got some it, cool, cool scenes. You it's know. Good, atmospheric. And even though the ending had a little bit of a letdown, it was still, you know, it still kind of worked. Yeah, cool. I just hope that someplace, somewhere they find the missing scenes and they put them back in, but I doubt it. You know, it'd be nice. <laughs> but I doubt it, you know. Yeah. So I'm still trying to figure out what what kind of incest were they implying between, you yeah. know, Bella and Luna. You know, it's like, huh, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to look that up and see if I can find some. Yeah, that's what I that's what I read. So, oh. But anyway, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another another goofy movie. Yeah, um, yeah uh, like everybody else out in, in YouTube land, subscribe if you can. Give us a like, it helps, you know, so we can, so we can conquer the world and, you know, all that good stuff or whatever. You know. You're more movie madness. Yeah, yeah, I, I post, I, it, because, because YouTube, uh, wants content. I'm posting movies, you know, under the Destination Nightmare Theater banner. So in between podcasts, you'll get some goofy movies. I got a couple of responses, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go through my archives and find some goofy stuff to uh to that, put on there. Is that guy in Australia still broadcasting us? I don't know. You mean um Isn't there a radio guy or something? Yeah. <laughs> Dan. Dan. Slice radio. Okay. I don't know. He might be. Yeah, yeah he so. was around he was he was he was he was hanging out with us during the uh during the uh uh what you might call it uh not slow robot um oh god what was the i forgot what was the name of the comic book podcast that oh, used to be uh, on? two dimensions two dimensions i forgot it's been so long you know but yeah yeah he he connected with i think he i think he connected with us through two dimension it was either that or through slow robot but yeah dan pritchard anyway it's time to go now. So, Roddy, what should we be doing for the next two weeks before we have another podcast? You should be watching more B-movies. That's right. And you can watch the ones that I post on the YouTube page with Destination Night and B-movie podcast page. And and that's it. And let me, let me, let us, let's go before somebody else calls me up. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <All right. laughs>